So what's cooler than flying a tail dragger? Flying a tail dragger on skis. The last snowstorm of the season this year left me with a pretty unique opportunity. First time ski flying. Don't know how it's gonna go. All right, let's do it. A large system had moved through and left us with a lot of snow. The next day was clear, although windy. The only problem is that with skis, there's really very little steering. So we should be able to do a touch and go. We're only gonna do it with one notch of flaps. And we've got enough wind that our approach is gonna be fairly short and the performance is gonna be spectacular. So the stars aligned and Dennis had access to this Super Cub on skis, which he was more than happy to take me for a lesson in. And I was not gonna miss this opportunity. So it was a pretty cold day. It was about minus 10 degrees Celsius. I want to thank my buddies Brock and James for coming out and braving the cold to shoot from the ground. Clear prop. Okay, and then push the start button. The mags are already on. Okay, take the throttle. Yeah. I always get the engine started before I put my seatbelts on. That way if the student starts the airplane on fire, it's easier for me to run away. <laughs> So these are retractable skis on this airplane, so uh, we actually taxied out on the wheels and the initial takeoff was from pavement. And then uh, we had to pump the skis down, which I'll explain later. And then we did a bunch of touch and goes in the snow, which was awesome. This is the worst time of year with this freaking ice and there's some water still standing around, which is kind of dangerous. Mostly because if it splashes up on a control surface and freezes there, right, then you're screwed. Yeah. So this is actually only my second tailwheel lesson. I'd started training on another Super Cub in the fall, but it had a maintenance issue shortly after my first lesson, and it got grounded for the winter. But I got some great footage from that first lesson, which if you haven't seen those videos, check them out, they're on my channel. And I also reviewed the raw footage before this flight, so I felt pretty prepared, even though I hadn't flown one for a couple months. All right, well, let's just talk about what we're gonna do. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna take off out of here. Once again, airborne, I'm gonna get you to pump the skis down. Once we're confirmed that it's down, we'll come back in and then I'm going to do a touch and go just to see what it's like. Sure. What I'll try and do with the first landing is just to kind of get a feeling for how much drag there is and how deep the snow is and decide right. whether I feel comfortable doing more of them. Yep. And then also maybe getting you to do a landing. Except as I said, what you'll need to do is make sure that as soon as you touch, if I say go, that you just firewall it and go. Yep. So having done my homework to prepare for this flight, I actually ended up getting to do several landings on my own after Dennis did the initial test landing. Well, traffic, uh, Pop Romeo Kilo lining up runway 27. You can do the takeoff and then, uh, like I said, it'll be just like you remember. It'll fly off the ground in this attitude. If you feel the tail started to come up, just let it, let it come up a little bit and right. then control pitch to hold that attitude and it'll just fly right off the ground. All right, and the other thing we want to do is try and avoid any major puddles. Yeah, okay. Or at least not go through them too quickly. <laughs> okay, you have control? I have control. Just be prepared for a little bit of swing. You got right crosswind. And uh, you're going to find that it's just standard cub flying. It, it's exactly the way you remember it from the last time. Yep. Other than it's a lot colder. Okay, here, right, here we go. Punch and jab was the way Dennis described rudder control for takeoff and landing in a tail dragger in my first lesson, and that really stuck with me. but it was still pretty disconcerting to do that takeoff roll with my buddies shooting from the sidelines there. But I didn't look down for a second even to check airspeed during that takeoff. I wasn't looking down at the airspeed, I just wanted to look straight ahead. I didn't want to take a chance to swerve into one of those guys. All right, beautiful, wow, she's really, wow. Yeah, this weather, these things perform like crazy. Now this thing has a seaplane prop on it, so what we gotta be careful of as we lower the nose is that we bring the power back because it's very easy to over rev the engine on it. Okay, so I'm going to bring her back to uh, 2400. Yeah. So th the deal with the seaplane prop is that it's a more aggressive prop, or what's it's the... actually a finer pitch because okay. uh, it seems counterintuitive, but you need a finer pitch in order to allow the motor to spin at a higher RPM because the higher RPM provides more horsepower. Right. So with that finer RPM, what happens is when you lower the nose, there's less resistance and the RPM starts to build up beyond the red line that the engine is rated for. Any fixed pitch prop is a compromise, right? Yep. So, but when you're doing a lot of float plane flying, you really need to, you know, to get her off the water. And you're never in that big of a hurry because you're on vacation. What Dennis means by that is that a fine pitch, although giving you more horsepower with a higher RPM, also will not give you as much cruise speed, 
like a coarse pitch prop would. That's why constant speed propellers are cool when you can change from fine pitch for takeoff to coarse pitch for cruise. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'll take over from here. Yeah, I'm gonna and you're gonna start. You're gonna move that lever into the uh, down right. position. Do you have control. I have control. So flying from the back seat is pretty limiting. Not only does Dennis not have any instruments back there, but he also doesn't have access to all the controls. Like I think all he has back there is a stick, rudder pedals, and a throttle. Like mixture, carb heat, flaps, a bunch of other controls he doesn't have access to, including in this airplane the pump mechanism for the skis, which is super awkward. So here's how it works. This is the uh, mechanism for controlling the pump that controls the skis coming up and down. Put this down into the down position, then you pump this, and then that'll drop the skis down. And the fluid flows through these hydraulic lines that pressurizes the piston that moves the skis up and down in relationship to the wheels that stay static. So you just pump until you feel pressure, and uh, then you land on the snow. And then reverse to get them up, put that there, and then pump, pump, pump. So trying to fly while doing that, quite a challenge. How are they doing? Are they moving? Uh, yep. All right, so we're good where the skis are? They, I, don't, I can't really tell. Yep. I can see from back here, because I have the, the angle, I can see the extended piston when they're down. Okay. So it's a pretty uh, skillful trick to be able to do this while you're flying. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to slow us back a bit so you can give us a notch of flaps. And as I said, that's, we're only going to use one notch. There's one notch. Okay. Oh, bro, I'm going to kill it right base, 2-7, bro. Life is good. And we're only using one notch because of the, the go around, right? Yeah, seeing it from here, it's, it's short. So that little patch of snow there to the right of the runway is where we're going to be landing. And what's more impressive is that Dennis is going to do it with no instruments in the back of my head filling the majority of his forward view. So it's pretty impressive. I feel like we're a little bit high. Well, it's a pretty draggy airplane once I pull the power off. It yeah. descends pretty quickly. Uh, Romeo Kilo's final runway 27 Burlington, touch and go on the snow. Okay, so I'm just going to watch if I'm not doing anything on this one, okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I want to get a feel for what the winds and yep. everything are like here. All good, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Those trees are a little high there, you don't want to come in shallow. So flying without an airspeed indicator and someone's head in front of you isn't hard enough. We're also dealing with pretty flat light conditions, and that makes it even harder to judge the touchdown point. Dennis actually ended up landing a little bit long, but he still totally got her out of there uh, without any problem, even though I was a little bit concerned watching those snow banks rush up at us. Call stop. Oscar Victor radio check. <laughs> like, uh, that snow bank is getting close. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. Oh, well, yeah. She can sure climb when she wants to. Yeah. How did you feel about the snow? Amount of snow or whatever. It's not bad. It's uh, yeah, it seems you know, to be pretty slippery. Yeah, it's smooth. like a, a soft field landing, right? You right. just want to hold it off, and I might have come in a little bit fast. In heavier airplanes, they'll actually put a ski on the tail, right? But on this one, it's just a tire. In fact, it's good in a way because if you need to slow down, you pull back on the stick, and that it plunges the tail into the snow, right? And if you need to go and steer, then you push forward, and that lifts the tail out of the snow. But then all you got is rudder. We got no brakes. So they do become a little bit of a bear to control. Yeah, so punch and jab. Yeah. So you have a better view than I do, so you'll have a little bit easier time judging the touchdown point. Yeah. All right, you yeah. want to give her a try? Yeah, definitely. Okay, you have control. Have control. Yeah, we keep in the flaps where they are. For the yeah, way. it'll be all right, because we're going to be bringing them back down in a second anyway, yeah. so. I remember that adverse yaw as you turn. Yeah. I want to go down around 1,500 RPM on base type of yep. thing. I'll kill right base too, so for early. Down a little fast. Yeah, well, like I said, she's pretty draggy, and the wind's pushing you further and further away yeah, from the run. Kill Oscar Victor on uh, taxi lane crossing 2709. I want to come in at about 70. I would say the initial stage of the, of the approach should be at about 70, and then you're kind of trying to slow it to about 60 over the last yeah. few hundred feet. If you get much below 60, you get a, quite an excessive sink rate. So not that that's a big problem in snow. It'll plop down nice and soft, but the ground might rush up at you a little faster than you're expecting. Gotcha. You can see where we touched down, and that's a little bit further than I would have liked, but because I'm, I'm looking out the right side because that's where the better view is, but the airspeed indicator is on the left. 
Well, you did that whole thing just by feel, obviously. Pretty you much. Couldn't see the airspeed, yeah. But we're still at 70, so I'm feeling reasonably good. A little bit high, but I know it's just going to sink. So I'm going to keep it stable. Yeah, you see here as you slow it down, this is where you're going to feel it start to sink. So, need, so this is where you need to add a bit of power. Yeah. That, what, what? Yeah, that's that just sinks, difference that in air currents, basically. Yeah, you just okay. lost a little bit of the headwind. Yeah, totally. All right, so bring the power back. There you go, and then just nose up a bit. Probably touched already. Okay. All right, go, give her. Keep the stick back. Awesome. Nice. Oh, that was awesome. But it bounced it a little bit, but... Yeah. If it bounces, it's usually like the same as on wheels. It's because you touch down a little fast. Yeah. With the higher air density now, you don't need that same kind of speed that you would in, in the summer when the air is thin. So I actually managed to hit the same spot for future landings. And as I beat the snow down, it became clear that there were some snow drifts that had been bouncing us a little bit. So the rest of this lesson is awesome, and Dennis continues to impart amazing wisdom. So I'm going to cut it together into the highlights, but you might notice some missing pieces and some missing radio calls as I truncate things. But all in all, it's pretty awesome and fun to watch, so stick it out. It's worth it. Yeah, the one nice thing about this, well, there's lots of nice things, but one of them is that every field is now a potential landing site in the event of an engine failure. Yeah, it's brilliant. You don't have to worry about where you're going. Yeah, this is the dream, man. I would love to own one of these with skis and have the option for floats. Let's keep bringing the power back. You start a downwind turn now if you want, Steve. Dodge that. Again, I can't see the altimeter, but... This is all eyes out flying. It is definitely what I'm finding is that I'm eyes out here. Yeah, so I felt like I needed to add more power while I was starting our transition there that time, which I didn't expect, but. You remember back in ground school, the drag curve, right? Yeah, so the drag curve on this is steep. Well, yeah, that's as the airplane good. slows down, it goes up the back side of that drag curve really quickly. The only way to compensate for that is with a little bit of extra power. On top of that, you probably have a little bit of wind shear down near the ground, so all of a sudden you lose that headwind and the airplane uh, has a momentary loss of airspeed. Right. So that's why it'll sink even more. Up Romeo Kilo, right base, 27 Burlington. Uh, with any kind of headwind in these airplanes, if you pull the power back, it, their descent is almost a lot. Well, Exaggerating, but it feels almost vertical. You know? Yeah, no, they've definitely really started to send there at that one point. Yeah, they don't penetrate very well because they're light and they're draggy. Up Romeo Kilo's final runway 27 Burlington for the snow. There right, you go. You can see where I touched down, eh? Or I don't know if you can see it yeah. now, but. Yeah, no, that's optimum there. It's the first third of the runway, but we just want to try and do it a little slower this time. Roger that. So we're 75, so I'm going to pitch for speed here and. Be ready for that sink. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm coming in steep, but I'm going to believe that it's stable. Well, there's a bit of dead air down there, and uh, the little bit steeper approach means a little bit more speed, a little more penetration, a little bit more control until... So I'm a lot higher this time, I'm yeah. almost too high. Yeah, but if, again, if you pull the power back, keep the nose pointed at the touchdown zone, then you can start rounding it out as you get closer. And then add power? No, I wouldn't really. You're, you're good. Just start bringing the power back, nose up, it's down. nose up, nose up. Oh, you know what it is? It's a bit of a, a bit of a drift. Okay. Power giver. Awesome. So there are a couple of snow drifts there that we were kind of jumping. Oh yeah. So no doubt those are kind of like little launch ramps, eh? Yeah. But we're we're pounding them down, so the next one might be less. <laughs> yeah. If you land in the exact same spot. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll try for accuracy. So having that GoPro looking down at the skis was pretty cool to review to see that I actually did manage to almost completely put it in the same spot for the rest of the landings, including that one. So I'm giving myself a pat on the back on that one. Wow, this is fun, man. This is a lot of fun. Like a bush pilot. You think those boys are jumping in the truck every time we take off? <laughs> Yeah, this would be cool, but I appreciate them coming out. Yeah, they're filmmakers, so they're pretty excited about this stuff, too. Got some good footage. It looks like they've spotted a couple of optimum positions to do some yeah, there are shots. Yeah, the more we give them, the more angles. Feet, uh, for runway 32, is that touch and go? What's going on there? Someone taking off from here? Uh, downwind for 32, so we're actually we're, uh, timing ourselves very, very well. Okay. We're both just kind of crisscrossing each other, which is perfect. That uh, whining that you hear is that old World War II gyroscopic attitude indicator. 
That's awesome. Yeah, that's like a Spitfire, eh, that one? Yeah. Pop Romeo Kilo is uh, right base 2-7, uh, Burlington. Turning final there, Mike. And, uh, I got him. be okay. Yeah, he's right off our nose. He's yeah. on a uh, short final for 3-2. Right, yeah. yeah, so this might be a conflict, but we'll see. Oh, there it goes. Hey, you got an eye on him? I do see it. Yeah, Oscar is overshooting runway 3-2. All right, is he yeah. doing that for us, or? Roger that. That uh, wasn't because of us, was it? Too high. What'd he say? I don't know. All right, anyway. Oh, no, he said he was too high. Too high, cool, okay. Yes, yeah, so there it goes. All right, everything's stable. We're at 70. Yeah, yeah it's almost the trick the is to pitch the speed you want. Just be prepared to give it a little shot of gas to arrest the sink rate. Don't use the... Yep. Don't, use, don't change use the pitch. Yeah, use the throttle to adjust the glide path only. There you go. Beautiful. Oh, all right. More snow drifts. Yeah. And the crosswind was also pretty good. Which helped keep things interesting. Oh, looks like Brock is going to play chicken with us in the snow, is he? Oh, he's the one with the boots. Uh, he knows what he wants. He wants to get this shot. That's fine. <laughs> Bob Romero kills final runway 2-7 for the snow. Touch and go. Yes, yeah, so I'm still a little faster. I'm at 80. I'm going to hold the pitch up, power down, get her to 70. There we go. Now yeah. pitch back. Yeah, and even slip it a bit. You can always drag it in a little bit with power if you think it's necessary, but I think you're actually pretty this is good. good. Yeah, I feel good about this one. I'm just going to do everything gently. No aggressive pitch. I feel a little bit hot, but she does sink right here. Yeah, there it is. Eh? Yeah. I'm not going to fight it. Okay. Going to drop the kill off turning downwind, runway 32, touch and go. Yeah, those drifts are a little tall. There we go, that's what I want. Beautiful. Power? Yep. Wow, Brock is cocky, he's staying there. He's out. <laughs> take one for the team. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. He left the camera and he ran for it. <laughs> but he wanted to get the shot. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh yeah, I felt a lot better about that one. Yeah, that was really was stable textbook. Well, what do you think? I don't know, one more? Sure. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, this is really brilliant. Okay, so this will be a touch and go, and then we're going to put uh, the wheels uh, down in the air. Yeah. Final for runway 32, stop and go. Hey, how disconcerting is this? <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, it's meant to do that. Yeah, I know, but is it back on? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Maybe just a story, but it was about a guy in the Army, and uh, apparently the training pilot had the Beat habit him. of... Uh, no, he'd have the habit of throwing the stick out the window, saying, well, you got to land it, son, because I can't. Wow, okay. I've heard the stories about guys beating them, the student with a stick. Well, that could happen, too. Got a little high, so I'm going to slip. Yep. Only traffic, kill all on short final for 3-2. Uh, Romeo kill is also short final. We should be fine, Mike. It felt pretty good flying short final here when Dennis didn't say anything while well, I nailed this last one. And I know I'm just barely scratching the surface on my tailwheel training, so I don't want to sound cocky. Nice, that was beautiful. Yeah, I felt good about that one. Awesome, well, that's a good one to end it on. I thought so. Yeah, we always want to end on a high note. Okay, so I have control. Do you have control? So then I switched back to the pumping and we put her down on the pavement on the wheels for the last one. So as usual, my disclaimer, I'm a private pilot. I make these videos for my own self-analysis purposes. I'm happy to share and any positive feedback is welcome. Uh, I've set a bit of a precedent lately making some more epic longer videos, but honestly, I usually try to aim for five minutes in a virtual ride along video with some tidbits or some wisdom or lessons I'm learning. Uh, anyways, for more virtual ride along flying videos like this, please subscribe and keep on keeping your flight chops sharp. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share Aviation, a network for pilots by pilots.